guys! Welcome back to our YouTube channel. So our topic for today will be all about IFRS number 2, also known as Share-Based Payment. Okay? So Share-Based Payment is a compensation arrangement established by the entity whereby the entity's employees shall receive shares of capital in exchange for their services or incurs liabilities to the employees in the amounts based on the price of its shares. In short, Share-based payments are actually additional compensation given to the employees. Pero syempre, wala namang libre sa mundo ngayon. Tama ba? Ang ibig sabihin ngayon, hindi basta-basta magbibigay ng additional compensation yung ating entity na pinag-uusapan. Ibig sabihin ngayon, kailangan pagtrabahuhin yan ng ating mga employees. That is why the share-based payment or the additional compensation here is in exchange for the services of the employees. Okay? Now, based on that definition, see to it na meron tayong dalawang klase ng share-based compensation. No? Ano yung una? Sabi dito, the entity's employee shall receive shares. That's why the first kind of share-based compensation is yung tinatawag natin na equity settled share-based compensation. Okay? Then ano pa? Or incurs liabilities to the employees. Kapag may liabilities tayo sa empleyado, ibig sabihin kailangan nating magbigay ng pera. Tama ba? Ibig sabihin yung second kind ng share-based compensation ng pinag-uusapan natin dito is yung tinatawag naman natin na cash settled share-based compensation. Okay? So, dalawang share-based compensation ng ating pag-uusapan but in this video, focus muna tayo dun sa equity settled. So, sa part 2, which is ia-upload natin bukas, no? I-explain natin or i-discuss natin doon yung cash settled share-based compensation naman. Okay? So, ngayon ganito. Itong share-based payment na to, sabi sa dulo ng definition, no? Based on the what? Based on the price of its shares. So, sir, bakit naman binibase sa price ng shares yung additional compensation na to? Ganito kasi yan. Kailangan, syempre, hindi ka basta-basta magbibigay ng ganito. Dapat beneficial din kasi to sa entity. So, see to it, na kapag mataas yung, number, ah, yung price ng shares, isa lang ang ibig sabihin yan. Sir, anong ibig sabihin niyan? Ang ibig sabihin niyan, mataas ang net income natin. So, sir, paano natin mapapataas ang net income? Mapapataas mo ang net income if yung mga employees mo is what? If yung mga employees mo is actually motivated. So, para ma-motivate sila na ibigay nila yung best nila no? sa pagtatrabaho sa atin, minsan, nagbibigay tayo ng additional compensation or bonuses and then these bonuses are based on the price of the shares because once again, the price of the shares is directly related no, to the net income of the company. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo dito? That is why this remuneration arrangement is normally given no, to directors, senior executives, or other key employees lang. But don't get it wrong, no? pwede, pwede rin po itong ibigay sa mga rank and file employees natin. Okay? So, this compensation arrangement is usually tied to performance in a strategy that uses compensation to motivate the employees or the recipients. That is why, once again, binibase natin sa market value or fair value ng shares yung additional compensation na ating binibigay. Okay ba tayo dun? Ayan, ganito. Kapag sinabi natin equity settled share-based compensation, here, the entity issues equity instrument, pwedeng shares, pwedeng share options, pwedeng preference shares in considerations for the services received by the entity. Pero most common uh, example ng equity settled is yung tinatawag natin na share option. So, focus tayo no, sa share option sa discussion natin for today. Okay? Kapag sinabi naman natin na cash settled share-based compensation, here, the entity incurs a liability for services received pa din, and the liability is what? Is based on the entity's equity instrument. Right? So, here, since naka-base sa price ng shares, yung binibigay natin pera dito, si to it na normally, ang binibigay natin dito is yung tinatawag natin na share appreciation rights. Alright? So, namimigay naman na tayo dito ng share appreciation. Right. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo dyan? Hopefully, okay ba tayo, no? Now, focus po tayo sa mga share options. Okay? So, equity settled lang ang focus natin sa discussion sa video na to. Okay? So, share options, ano ba itong mga to? Well, share options, ito yung mga binibigay natin sa ating mga empleyado para makabili sila ng shares ng kumpanya. Pero, alright, yung shares na yon or yung 
of exercise price kasi kapag sinabi natin share option optional lang to no kaya siya tinawag na share option ibig sabihin may option yung mga empleyado natin whether i-exercise ba nila yan or hindi but see to it no na yung exercise price dito once again no the exercise price is normally less than the market price of the shares ibig sabihin kapag in-exercise nila yung mga share options na yan normally mas mababa yan sa market price or doon sa right uh, fair value ng mga shares So, namimigay tayo ng share options to enable the employees to acquire shares of the entity during a specified period of time only, no? Pero, si to it na may kapalit yan. Siyempre, may exercise price. So, gagastos pa rin sila somehow. Are we good on that? Are we good on that? Hopefully, we're still good, no? So, now, the second question here is on how to measure these share options. So, we have two methods, no? on measuring share options. So, sir, ano yung dalawang method na yun? Number one is yung tinatawag natin na fair value method. Again, meron tayong tinatawag na fair value method. Okay? Then, ano yung pangalawa? Yung pangalawa is yung tinatawag naman natin na intrinsic value method. Luanag ba? So, sir, ano pong pinagkaiba ng fair value method at ng intrinsic value method? Well, kapag sinabi natin fair value method, right, dito, obvious naman, no? The compensation is actually equal to the fair value of the share options. Pero, see to it, no? Na yung fair value of options na tinutukoy ko dito must be the fair value on what date? On the date of grant. Right? So, ang ibig sabihin, nakafix yung price dito. Kung magkano yung fair value ng options dun sa great date of grant, yun na yung gagamitin natin amount sa pag-measure ng mga share options na to. Very good. This is actually the method mandated no by IFRS number 2. Ibig sabihin, required tayo na gumamit ng fair value method. Eh sir, bakit may intrinsic value method pa kung required pala tayong gumamit ng fair value method? Well, some uh, sometimes kasi hindi po available yung fair value ng share options. That is why If the fair value of the options is not available, that's the time that we can use the intrinsic value method. So, hindi pwede gamitin si intrinsic value method if may fair value. Pwede lang itong gamitin if and only if, right, the fair value of the share options cannot be estimated reliably. Okay? So, sir, papaano po computein yung intrinsic value na yan? Kasi fair value normally given yan eh. So, intrinsic value, paano yun i-compute? Well, see to it that intrinsic value is equal to the market value of shares minus the option price or yung tinatawag natin na exercise price. Eh, sir, akala ko ba walang fair value dito? Don't get it wrong. Fair value of options po ang hinahanap natin dito. So, kapag given ng fair value options, ng options, fair value method. But if the fair value of options is not available, intrinsic value method tayo, wherein the intrinsic value is equal to the market value or fair value of shares. Iba ang shares sa share options. Kapag sinabi natin shares, well, equity na talaga yun. Ibig sabihin, stocks na talaga yun. Pag sinabing share options, hindi pa yan stocks, hindi pa yan shares. I-exercise pa yan ng ating mga empleyado. Maluanag ba? So, kapag intrinsic value, that is equal to the market value of shares minus the option price. Okay? We're in here. Siyempre, alam naman natin na paiba-iba po yung market value or fair value ng shares. Araw-araw nga. Actually, every 5 seconds pa bago-bago yan. Lanag ba? Ibig sabihin ngayon, right? Si to it here, sa intrinsic value method, hindi po fix ang gagamitin nating amount. Pabago-bago yan every year. So, you have to know how much will be the market value of shares at the end of each year. And apparently, intrinsic value will be computed every year. Not unlike the fair value method, wherein under the fair value method, the fair value options is actually fixed. Are we good on that? Now, when do we recognize or how do we recognize share options? So, lalagay ko dito, recognition no, of share options or sabihin na natin recognition of compensation. So, when do we recognize the additional compensation? So, see to it, no? Na kailangan mo munang malaman whether the share options vest immediately. Again, the first scenario is that the share options vest immediately. Then, the second scenario is that the share options do not vest immediately. Okay? So, sir, anong ibig sabihin 
ng share options vest immediately. Well, kapag sinabi natin share options vest immediately, here, the employees are not actually required to complete a specified period of service or yung tinatawag natin na vesting period before uh, they will be entitled to the share options. Ibig sabihin, right, hindi natin sila hinihingan ng services dito. Hey, employees, bibigyan kita ng share options. Pwede mo yung i-exercise agad-agad. So, kapag yung share options vest immediately, they can exercise those share options immediately. Are we good on that? And if that's the case, see to it, no, that the total compensation expense, again, the total compensation expense na later on tatawagin nating TCE, will be recognized kailan? Will be recognized in full. Okay? But if the share options do not vest immediately, see to it that here, the employees need to complete a specified service period or yung tinatawag natin na vesting period. Ibig sabihin, hey employee, bibigyan kita ng share option. Basta magtrabaho ka sa akin, manatili ka sa akin for 3 years. Ibig sabihin dito, may vesting period tayo. And if that's the case, see to it that the total compensation expense will be what? Will be recognized as expense. Again, this will be recognized as expense over the vesting period. So, kailangan mong i-allocate no, yung total of compensation expense over the vesting period kapag nire-require natin yung mga empleyado na magtrabaho muna. Ay ba tayo dun? So, para may, mas maintindihan natin itong mga share options na to, let's now move on here in illustrative problem number one. Okay? So, here on January 1, 2017, share options are granted to employees to purchase 80,000 ordinary shares of 50 par value at 60 pesos per share. On this date, the fair value of each share option is equal to 15 pesos and then the options are vested immediately, meaning hindi required yung mga empleyado natin na magtrabaho or right, manatili sa atin over a specified period of time. Okay? Meaning the employees can exercise the options immediately. Employees exercise all their share options kailan? on December 31, 2017. So, the requirement here is to provide the journal entries. Okay? So, here, the journal entry on January 1, 2017, say to it, na-vest immediately, no? So, ang ibig sabihin, we can recognize the total compensation expense immediately. So, debit compensation expense, which is tinatawag din na remuneration expense or salaries expense. Pare-pareho lang yun, ha? So, debit compensation expense and then credit what? Credit share options outstanding. Again, credit, share options outstanding, which is equal to magkano kaya to? Well, 80,000 share options po ang ating binigay at magkano yung fair value on that date? Sabi dito, on that date, the fair value of each option is equal to 15. So, times 15 pesos. So, magkano yan guys? 80,000 times 15 is actually equal to 1.2 million pesos. So, as you can see, nirecognize natin ng buo yung total compensation expense. Okay? So, ngayon ganito, as we all know, compensation expense or salaries expense is part of the computation of net income. Pero itong share options outstanding, saan kaya yan mapupunta? Always remember that share options outstanding is part of the total share premium of the company. So, part po yan no, ng share premium ng kumpanya. Maliwanag ba? Ngayon, on December 31, 2017, sabi ng problem, in-exercise lahat. So here, sabi nga natin may exercise price, so debit cash tayo. So magkano yung exercise price? Magkano nila pwedeng bilhin yung mga shares? Well, here the exercise price is equal to 60 pesos per share. So 80,000 times 60, this is equal to 4.8 million pesos. Wanag ba? Now, kapag in-exercise na yan, kailangan na natin i-recognize yung share option. So debit, share options outstanding, which is equal to 1.2 million pesos. Okay? Credit share capital at and as this cost, no, sa shareholders equity which is na-upload din na rin sa channel na to, yung discussion na yun, share capital is always at par. So, 80,000 times the par value of 50 pesos or that's only equal to 4 million pesos, no? So, 4 million lang will be the amount to be credited sa share capital. Then, the excess which is equal to 2 million pesos will be credited saan? Will be credited to share premium. Okay? So, that's the journal entry at the end of the year. Very good. Now, before natin iwan sa illustrative problem number one, what if nag-expire yung mga share option? Hindi in-exercise, but rather hinayaan 
mag-expire. If that's the case, ang gagawin mo lang is i-recognize yung share options outstanding. So, debit share options outstanding equal to 1.2 million. Then, i-reclassify mo lang yan sa share premium natin. So, credit share premium equal to 1.2 million. So, that is illustrative problem number one. Okay? Now, let's move on here in illustrative problem number two. So, on January 1, 2017, share options are granted to officers to purchase 80,000 ordinary shares of 50 par value at 60 per share. On this date, the fair value of the share option is 15. Sir, parang pareho lang. Yes, pareho lang. Kaso, pinalitan ko to ng konti. Tinanggal ko yung provision na vested immediately yung mga shares. But instead, ang nilagay ko dito, the officers are entitled to the share options only after completing 2 years of service. So, with vesting period, ibig sabihin yung total compensation expense na na-compute natin kanina, which is equal to 1.2 million, ikakalat mo yan over the vesting period. So, over 2 years. Okay? The options will expire one year after the end of the vesting period and then the employees exercise all their share options on December 31, 2019. So, compute for the compensation expense each year and provide journal entries. Okay? So, here, on January 1, 2017, see to it na no entry tayo. Bakit, sir? Hindi pa naman nagtatrabaho yung mga empleyado natin. Accrual tayo palagi. Recognize expense only when incurred. Not unlike dito sa number 1, incurred already na yan. Why, sir? Kasi hindi naman natin sila pinagtatrabaho. That's why on January 1, on grant date, ni-recognize na natin ang buo. Pero dito, sa illustrative 2, meron tayong vesting period. That is why the first uh, date kung kailan tayo magre-recognize ng compensation expense will only be on the first balance sheet date which is on December 31, 2017. So, the journal entry here is to debit compensation expense and then credit share options outstanding. Once again, dito, yung 1.2 million na na-compute natin kanina, paano nga ulit na-compute? This is equal to 80,000 share options times 15, which is the fair value of share options. Itong 1.2 million na to, i-divide natin over 2 years kasi dalawang taon po yung vesting period natin. So here, at the end of 2017, we will only recognize compensation expense equal to 600,000 pesos. Okay? The next, on December 31, 2018, see to it that another compensation expense will be recognized and that's equal to 600,000 because once again, dalawang taon po ito. Okay? And then the journal entry on the exercise of the share options and on the expiration of the share options will just be the same as with the journal entries here in illustrative problem number one. So, hindi ko na yun uulitin pa. So, ang point ko lang dito, kapag vest immediately, recognize immediately yung total compensation expense. Pero kapag may vesting period, i-allocate mo over the vesting period. Okay? So, hopefully, okay ka pa, no? So, guys, apologies pala. Alright? Kung may mga uh, typographical error, merong mga gram uh, grammatical error tayo na kukomit minsan because hindi ko na ini-edit pa itong mga videos na to. Siyempre, it will take time to edit these videos. That is why as is ko na lang itong, itong ina-upload. So, kung paano ko sinut, ganun ko rin kasi ina-upload. So, please bear with me na lang. Okay? So, hopefully, kahit na may mga konting grammatical and typographical error, eh, natututo ka pa rin. Now, let's move on here in illustrative problem number 3. So, on January 1, 2017, an entity granted 300 share options to each 400 employees. Conditional upon the employees remaining in the entity's employee during the vesting period. So, may vesting period daw. The share options vest at the end of a 3-year period. So, 3 years po ang vesting period natin. Then, on grant date, each share op option has a fair value of 30 pesos. Okay? So, by December 31, 2017, 20 employees have left and it is expected that on the basis of weighted average probability, a further 25 employees will leave during the vesting period. So, for the year 2017, magkano kaya yung i-recognize natin compensation expense? Alamin natin, listen very carefully. We have how many employees? We have a total of 4 100 employees. So, lalagay ko dito, no? 400 employees. So, during 2017, ilan ang umalis? Umalis yung 20. Hindi na nakatiis. Hindi na kinaya. And then, inaasahan natin na what? Inaasahan po natin na may aalis pa daw na 25. So, minus 
25 for the year 2018 to 2019. So, mag-ilan lang talaga yung remaining employees na inaasahan natin at the end of vesting period. That's 400 minus 25, then minus 20, or that's equal to 355 employees. So, if each employees no, will receive 300 share options, ilang share options lahat ang ating ipamimigay? 355 times 300, that's a total of 106,500 share options. We good? Imumultiply natin yan sa fair value because if the fair value of share options is available, fair value method lang tayo. Okay? And fair value is equal to 30 pesos. So, the total compensation expense now is how much? 106,500 times 30 or that's equal to 3,195,000 pesos. Are we good? Now, ganito, i-divide natin yan syempre sa vesting period which is 3 years, no? So, dito, magkano ngayon yung compensation expense natin for the year 2017 because the requirement here is to compute for the compensation expense each year. So, for the year 2017, it is equal to 3,195 divided by 3 or this is equal to 1,065,000 pesos. Okay? Now, punta tayo ng 2018. So, dito sa 2018, ilang empleyado nga ulit meron tayo? We have 400 employees. Ilan ang umalis ng 2017? 20 po ang umalis. 2018, anong sabi ng problem? By December 31, 2018, 27 employees have left. So, minus 27. And, and, and it expects that a further 30 employees will leave during 2019. So, during 2019, inaasahan natin na meron pang 30 na alis. So, ilan lang yung natitirang matibay? That's equal to 400. Minus 20, minus 27, and minus 30, or this is just equal to 323 employees. Then times mo yan sa 300 share options because once again, no, each employees will receive 300 share options daw, sabi ng problem. So 323 times 300, this is equal to 96,900. Times the fair value, once again, kapag fair value method, baka fix ang fair value. Okay? So times the fair value of 30 pesos, the total compensation expense now will be equal to magana? Will be equal to 2,907,000. So see to it, na dito hindi natin automatically makukompute, no? Yung compensation expense for the year 2018. But instead, ang makukompute actually natin dito will be the cumulative compensation expense. So sir, paano mo yan makukompute? Well, imumultiply mo lang naman yan sa number of years na lumipas na. Dalawang taon na yung lumipas, no? So, times 2, then i-divide mo by 3 because 3 years ang vesting period. Dito sa 2017, 1 year pa lang ang lumilipas, so times 1 over 3 tayo dito. So, ganun din ang lalabas, 1,065,000. Sir, bakit hindi yun naging cumulative? Kasi first year, eh. Ibig sabihin ni first year pa lang, wala pang compensation expense na nararecognize previously. So, kung magkano yung cumulative for the first year, yun na rin yung compensation expense. Pero sa second year onwards, since may na-recognize na previously, hindi na yun ganun. So, cumulative compensation expense will be equal to 2,907 times 2 over 3 or this is equal to 1,938,000 pesos. Okay? So, kung gusto mo ngayong makompute yung compensation expense just for the year 2018, all you have to do is to deduct the compensation expense recognized last year. And that's equal to 1,065,000 pesos. So, 1938 minus 1,065,000 pesos, this will give us 873,000 pesos. So, for the year 2018, the compensation expense will be equal to 873,000. Okay? Pero kapag tinanong ka ng problem, magkano na yung share options outstanding, hindi 873, ah? But instead, share options outstanding will be equal no, to 1938. Okay? Kasi last year, nag-recognize ka na ng 1,065,000. Diba nag? Now, punta tayo sa year 2019. This, is, this will be the last year, no? Kasi tatlong taon lang naman to. So, for the year 2019, once again, we have 400 employees. 2017, lumayas yung 20. 2018, umalis din po yung 27. And then, 2019, ilan yung lumalis? By December 31, 2019, 25 employees have left. So, minus 25. So, ilan lang talaga yung natirang matibay? That's 400 minus 20 minus 27 and then minus 25 or that's equal to 328 employees. Once again, each employees will receive 300 share options each. 
So, ilang share options ang ating ipamimigay? That's 328 times 300, or that's equal to 98,400. Okay? Times the fair value, which is equal to magkano? That's equal to 30. See to it now that the total compensation expense will be equal to how much? That's 98,400 times 30, or that's equal to 2,952,000. Okay? Since tapos na, yung vesting period, you don't have to multiply this by 3 over 3. Kasi 3 years na yung lumipas, then 3 years yung vesting period. Sir, bakit naman? Kasi if end na nung vesting period, yung total compensation expense na yan, dapat na-recognize na in full. Maliwanag? So, ang ibig ngayon sabihin dito, right, kahit na i-multiply mo yan ng 3 over 3, yung cumulative na makukompute mo siya pa din. 2,952,000 pa din. Okay? So, kung gusto mong makompute, magkano yung compensation expense for the year 2019, kagaya lang kanina, all you have to do is to deduct the compensation expense recognized last 2017 and 2018, which is equal to 1,065,000 and 873,000 pesos respectively. So, magkano yung compensation expense ng 2019? That's 2,952 minus 1,065,000 Then, minus 873, or this is equal to 1,014,000 pesos. Okay? So, that's illustrative problem number 3. Hopefully, okay ka pa, no? Now, let's move on here in illustrative problem number 4. Okay? So, on January 1, 2017, an entity granted to an executive, so isa lang, no? 20,000 share options to purchase 20,050 par value shares at 100 per share, conditional upon the executives remaining in the entity's employ until December 31, 2019. So, ibig sabihin, if January 1, 2017 yung grant date, kailangan manatili hanggang December 31, 2019, yung vesting period ngayon natin is 3 years. Okay? So, if the earnings increase by at least an average of 10% per year over the 3-year period, the exercise price will drop to 80 per share. Then, on grant date, the fair value of the share options is 30 if the exercise price is 80 and 25 if the exercise price is 100. So, dito, dalawa yung exercise price at dalawa din po yung ating fair value. So, kailangan mo munang alamin, no? So, here, ano yung requirement ulit? Compute for the compensation expense each year. So, start tayo ng 2017. So, anong sabi dito? During 2017 and 2018, earnings increased by 12% and 11% respectively. So, sa 2017, achieve natin yung 10%. So, ang ibig sabihin, exercise price is only 80. So, if the exercise price is 80, once again, no, 30 po yung ating fair value. So, ilang share options ang ating binibigay? That's 20,000 share options. Tama ba? Mumultiply natin yun sa fair value, which is 30. So, ilan yung total compensation expense natin? Total compensation expense will be 20,000 times 30, or this is equal to 600,000. Okay? Divide natin yan. Right? Sa, an? E, di-divide po natin yan sa vesting period, which is 3 years. Or, kung gusto mo naman, i-multiply mo yan ng 1 over 3. Pareho lang. Okay? So, here, the compensation expense now for the year 2017 will be how much? This is equal to 200,000. Okay? Now, punta tayo ng 2018. Ilan na yung average? Well, 2017, 12% daw. 2018, ilan na? 2018, that's 11%. So, the total will be how much? Will be 23%. I-divide natin yan by 2. So, ilan na? Alright, ang average. Average will be equal to 11.5%. Pasok pa din ba sa 10%? Pasok na pasok. Okay? So, ang ibig sabihin dito, si to it, na 30 pa rin ang ating gagamitin. So, total compensation expense will still be equal to 600,000. But this time, imumultiply na natin to, no? By 2 over 3 kasi 2 years na ilumipas and 3 years ang vesting period. So, the cumulative compensation expense now will be equal to 400,000. Then, kung gusto mo nga makuha yung compensation expense ng 2018 alone, i-deduct mo lang dyan yung compensation expense ng 2017, which is 200,000. So, compensation expense for the year 2018 will now be equal to 200,000 pesos. Okay? Then, last but not the least will be 2019. Nung sabi dito, but during 2019, earnings increase by only 5, ah, increase only by 4%. So, ilan yung average? Average natin will be equal, no? 
to 12 plus 11 plus 4 divided by 3. Or ilan yan? 12 plus 11 plus 4 divided by 3. Or that's just equal to 9%. Hindi umabot sa 30. So, ang ibig sabihin, kung hindi umabot sa 10%, rather, kung hindi umabot sa 10%, 100 ang exercise price. And if the exercise price is 100, 25 lang ang fair value. Okay? So, for the year 2019, if share options will be equal to 20,000, at ang fair value, once again, no, 25 pesos na lang, see to it that the total compensation expense here will be equal to magano. That's 20,000 times 25, or that's equal to 500,000. Once again, wag mo nang i-multiply pa to by 3 over 3 kasi dulo na, end na to ng vesting period. What you have to do here is to deduct na lang yung compensation expense ng 2017, which is equal to 200,000. And then, i-deduct mo rin yung compensation expense ng 2018, which is 200,000 pa din, para makompute mo yung compensation expense ng 2019, which is equal to magkano? That's equal to 100,000. So, the compensation expense for the year 2019 now will be equal to 100,000 pesos. Okay? Next, punta tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 5. So, here, same requirement, compute the compensation expense each year daw. So, on January 1, 2017, an entity granted share options to each of the 300 employees working in the sales department. The share options vest at the end of a 3-year period provided that the employees remain in the entity's employee and provided the volume of sales will increase by an average of 10% per year. So, dalawang conditions. No? The fair value of its share options on grant date is equal to 20 pesos. Okay? So, if the sales price increase by an average of 10%, each employee will receive 200 share options. If the sales increase by an average of 15% per year, see to it that each employee naman will receive ilan? Will receive 300 share options. So, nakadepende so kung, sa kung ilang increase ba, sa kung ilan yung increase sa sales. Okay? So, during 2017, ano nangyari? For the year 2017, the sales increase by 10% and the entity expects this rate of increase to continue in the next 2 years. Ibig sabihin kung 10% lang, dalawang daan lang ang ating ipamimigay. Okay? So, here, ilang empleyado nga ulit meron tayo? We have a total of 300 employees and if 10% lang yung in-increase, each employee will only receive 200 share options. So, times 200, ilang share options ito in total? That's 300 times 200 or this is equal to 60,000 share options. Okay? Multiply natin yan ulit sa fair value which is equal to 20 para makompute yung total compensation expense which is equal to 1.2 million pesos. 3 years daw ang vesting period. So, divided by 3, makukompute na natin yung compensation expense for the year 2017. So, 1.2 divided by 3, this is equal to 400,000. Okay? Ngayon, punta tayo ng 2018. Ano nangyari ng 2018? During 2018, the sales increase by 20%. So, ilan na yung average increase? That's equal to 10 plus 20 divided by 2 or that's equal to 15%. Tama ba? Ibig sabihin, kung naabutan na natin yung 15%, tatlong daan na yung marireceive ng ating mga empleyado. Okay? So, kung 300 na, ilang share options to? Once again, we have 300 employees. So, 300 times 300 na this time, we have a total of 90,000 share options. Times natin yan sa fair value, no? which is equal to magano? which is equal to 20, see to it that the total compensation expense this time will be equal to 1.8 million pesos. Okay? Two years na ilumilipas, so times two over three, kasi three years ang vesting period. So the cumulative compensation expense now will be how much? That's equal to 1.8 million times two over three, or that's equal to 1.2 million pesos. I-deduct natin dyan yung compensation expense recognized last year, which is equal to 400,000 para makompute natin magkano ba yung compensation expense this year. So, the compensation expense that will be recognized for the year 2018 now will be equal to 800,000 pesos. Okay? Then, last 2019 tayo. Anong sabi dito? Uh, while during 2019, the sales increased by an average 
Average na daw din, ha? By an average of 16% over the 3 years. Also, during 2019, 20 employees left the entity. So, for the year 2019, see to it, no? Na if, at the beginning, meron tayong 300 employees, kaso yung 20 hindi nakatiis. So, minus 20 na naglayas ng 2019, nag-resign ng 2019. So, ilan na lang yung talagang natirang matibay na nakapagtiis after 3 years? That's 280 employees. So, if, Naabutan naman yung average ng 15% kasi 16 daw yung average, tatlong daan ang marireceive ng bawat isa. So, times 300, we have how many share options in total? That's 280, no? Times 300, or this is equal to 84,000 share options. Okay? Multiply natin yan sa fair value, which is equal to 20, magkano yung total compensation expense natin? That's 84,000 times 20, or that's equal to 1,680,000 pesos. Dulo na to ng vesting period. So, wag mo nang i-multiply ng 3 over 3. Kasi, 1,680 din ang makukompute mo dun eh. Okay? So, ang gawin mo na lang, i-deduct dyan yung compensation expense ng 2017 at yung compensation expense ng 2018 para makompute yung compensation expense ng 2019. So, minus 400,000 at minus 800,000 tayo. But don't get it wrong, no? Pwede rin naman ng, na yung cumulative compensation expense for the year 2018 na 1.2 million ang iyong i-deduct dyan. Pareho lang po ang iyong makukuwang sagot. Okay? So, here, magkano yung compensation expense ng 2019? That's 1,680 minus 400,000 minus 800,000 or that's equal to 480,000 pesos. So, that's illustrative problem number 5. Okay? So, now, punta tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 6. So, here, in illustrative problem number 6, on January 1, 2017, an entity granted 20,000 share options to employees. The share options vest after 2 years provided the employees remain in service until 10. Okay? The fair value of the share options cannot be estimated reliably. So, since hindi natin kayang estimate magkano yung fair value ng share option, see to it na intrinsic value method ang gating gagamitin. Paano nga ulit makompute yung intrinsic value? Intrinsic value is equal to the fair value of shares minus the option price or the exercise price. Okay? Next, the par value of ordinary shares is 100 pesos. The option price is 125 and the market value of ordinary share is also 125 at the date of grant. Then, all share options vested on December 31, 2018 and no employees left the entity. Walang naglayas. So, if at the end of 2018, two years lang to, no? The share options can be exercised starting January 1, 2019 and expire two years after. All share options are exercised, no? On December 31, 2019. And then, the share market prices are 150 on December 31, 2017. 180 on December 31, 2018 and 200 on December 31, 2019. Okay? So, the requirement here is to compute for the compensation expense each year. Ganag ba? So, ngayon, ganito. If intrinsic value method ang ating ginamit, see to it that we will remeasure the compensation expense until the date of settlement. So, hanggang sa date of settlement, kailangan nating mag-remeasure. Not unlike the fair value method we're in, since naka-fix naman yung fair value on the date of grant, you don't have to remeasure the compensation expense after the vesting period. So, after the vesting period, yun na yun. Hindi na yun magbabago. Pero pag intrinsic value method, pabago-bago yung fair value of shares. Therefore, pabago-bago yung intrinsic value. And so, therefore, right, we can now conclude na pabago-bago din yung total compensation expense. Okay? So, 2017, muna ulit tayo. Ilang employees nga ulit meron tayo? We have a total of, hindi sinabi, pero sabi lang, an entity granted 20,000 share options. So, total share options granted to employees is equal to 20,000 pesos. Times natin yan sa intrinsic value. Magkano intrinsic value ng 2017? Well, magkano ba yung fair value ng 2017? That's 150, no? Minus mo yung option price na 125. So, this is equal to 25 pesos. So, 20,000 share options times the intrinsic value of 25, the total compensation expense now will be equal to 500,000 pesos. Okay? 
Once again, 2 years lang ang vesting period. So, divided by 2 years. So, magkano to guys? The compensation expense for the year 2017 will be equal to 250,000 pesos. Okay? Ngayon, punta tayo ng 2018. Once again, share options na ating pinamimigay po is equal to 20,000 share options. Okay? Times natin yan sa intrinsic value. Magkano na yung fair value at the end of 2018? 180 na daw. So, 180 minus the option price of 125. Magkano yan? 180 minus 125. This is equal to 55 pesos. So, magkano yung total compensation expense natin? That's 55 times 20,000 or that's 1.1 million pesos. Tapos na yung vesting period. Dalawang taon lang ang vesting period. Tama ba? Ibig sabihin, huwag mo nang i-multiply yan ng 2 over 2. Okay? Ang gawin mo na lang, i-deduct mo yung compensation expense ng 2017, which is 250,000, para makompute natin yung compensation expense ng 2018. Okay? So, 1.1 million minus 250,000, or this is equal to 850,000 pesos. So, for the year 2018, 850 ang ating i-recognize. Okay? Then, last but not the least, punta tayo sa 2019, no? So, share options natin binibigay equal to 20,000 po. Times natin yan sa intrinsic value pa din. Because once again, kapag intrinsic value method, until the date of settlement, we will remeasure the compensation expense. And any right, uh, difference between the previous compensation expense and the new total compensation expense will be recognized in profit or loss. Okay? So, additional compensation expense. So, magkano na? 200 na daw. So, 200 minus 125, magkano to? 200 minus 125, this is equal to 75 pesos. Okay? So, magkano na yung total compensation expense ng 2019? This is equal to 75 times 20,000 or that's equal to 1.5 million pesos. Then, i-deduct natin dyan yung compensation expense ng 2018, which is magkano yun? 1.1 million daw. So, the compensation expense to be recognized sa 2019 now is the additional amount equal to 400,000 pesos. Okay? So, for the year 2019, 400,000 will be our final answer. Okay? Next, punta tayo sa discussion muna ng acceleration of vesting. Okay? Before tayo pumunta dun sa next problem. So, kapag sinabi nating acceleration of vesting, anong nangyari dito? Well, ang nangyari lang naman dito is that the entity right cancels or settles the grant right of share options during the vesting period meaning hindi na nakapaghintay pa yung entity or yung kumpanya so originally 5 years ang vesting period pero at the end of 3 years or at the end of 2 years sige sa inyo na right mababait kayong mga empleyado wag niyo nang hintayin pa yung 5 years so ang nangyari lang dito parang in advance mo yung vesting period maliwanag ba so sir nung gagawin diyan well if there is an acceleration of vesting, madali lang to. The entity will just recognize immediately yung compensation expense na sana na-recognize niya if walang vesting period. Once again, kapag may vesting period, kung maaalala mo kanina, kinakalat natin yung total compensation expense over the vesting period. So, kapag in-accelerate yung vesting, right, in advance yung dulo ng vesting period, see to it, na yung compensation expense na hindi mo na-recognize dahil may vesting period will be recognized immediately as expense. Maliwanag ba? And then apparently here, pwede tayong mag, pag nag-accelerate tayo ng acceleration of vesting or nag-cancel tayo ng share option, see to it na pwede nating bayaran yung mga empleyado natin. So if binayaran natin yung ating mga empleyado, see to it no, that the uh, difference between the settlement price and the share options outstanding will be what? Will be recognized as expense. Maluanag ba? So dito, try natin ngayong sagutan eto illustrative problem number 7 para mas ma-apply natin yung acceleration of vesting na yan. So on January 1, 2017, an entity granted 300 share options to each 400 employees conditional upon the employees remaining in the entity's employ during the vesting period. The share options vest at the end of a 3-year period and on grant date, the share options has a fair value of 30 pesos. So by December 31, 2017, 20 employees have left and it is expected that on the basis of a weighted average probability, a further 25 employees will leave during 
the vesting period. Okay ba tayo dun? So, for the year 2017, once again, no? Meron tayong ilang empleyado. We have a total of 400 employees. For the year 2017, umalis daw yung 20. At inaasahan natin na for the year 2018 to 2019, aalis pa yung 25. So, ilan lang talagang matitira? That's 400 minus 20 minus 25. Or this is equal to 355 employees. Bawat isa, makakareceive ng ilan? Bawat isa, makakareceive ng 300 share options. So, we have a total of Ilang share options? We have a total of 106,500 share options. Okay? Multiply natin yan sa fair value which is equal to 30 para makompute natin magkano ba yung total compensation expense. So, the total compensation expense is actually equal to 3,195. Okay? 3 years ang vesting period. So, divide natin yan by 3 years para makompute magkano yung compensation expense for the year 2017. So, for the year 2017, the ah, compensation expense will be equal to 1,065,000. And since the requirement here is to provide the journal entries, no? situate to the journal entry at the end of 2017 is to debit compensation expense and then credit share options outstanding, which is equal to 1,065,000 pesos. We good? Now, anong nangyari? The entity decided to settle the award early on December 31, 2018. So, for the year 2018, nagkaroon ng acceleration of vesting. So, once again, kapag nagkaroon ng acceleration of vesting, right, the company will recognize no, immediately the compensation expense that would otherwise would have been recognized for services received over the remainder of the vesting period. So, if the total compensation expense is equal to 3,195, And we only recognize, no, compensation expense equal to one million sixty-five thousand. See to it that the remaining compensation expense now will be recognized fully in the year twenty eighteen. That's equal to magano. That's actually equal to two million one hundred thirty thousand. So the journal entry here, no, is to debit compensation expense and then credit share options outstanding equal to two million one hundred thirty thousand. Okay. Ngayon, ano nangyari? Case number 1, share options are recognized. So, lalagay ko dito, case 1. So, if the share options are recognized, see to it that will debit cash. Magkano yung option price? Magkano yung exercise price? Hindi sinabi, no? So, assume natin na option price. Again, let's assume that option price is actually equal to 35, while par value, no? Hindi rin kasi given is equal to 25 pesos. So, if 35 ang ating exercise price or option price, 35 times the 106,500 share options or magkano ng cash marili siyup natin? 35 times 106,500. This is equal to 32 or should I say 37? 27,500 pesos. Okay. Debit share options outstanding, which is equal to magkano? That's equal to 31,95. Credit share capital equal to Uh, par value of 25 times 106,500 or magkano yan? 25 times 106,500 or that's equal to 2,662,500 then credit share premium for the excess. At magkano yun? That's equal to 27,500 or that's equal to 4,260,000. Okay? So that's the journal entry in case number 1. Then case number 2. Anong nangyari sa case number 2? Share options are settled with a cash payment of 4.5 million. Once again, no, if the payment exceeds the fair value of the share option, the excess shall be recognized as an expense. Maluwanag ba yon? So dito will debit share options outstanding equal to magkano? Equal to 3195 lang. Kaso ang payment natin or yung credit to cash is magkano? That's equal to 4.5 million. So, any difference will be recognized as additional compensation expense. So, 4,500 minus 3,195 or 1,300,000. Once again, 1,300,000 will be recognized as additional compensation expense. Okay? So, that's acceleration of vesting and that's illustrative problem number 7. Okay? Then, last but not the least, no? Is yung tinatawag naman natin na modification. Again, meron tayong tinatawag na modification of condition. Okay? Last topic na to or last concept na to 
na i-discuss natin sa video na to. Okay? So, if the entity modified, no, the vesting condition on which the equity instrument were granted, right, well, the following rules or procedures will applied or will be followed. Okay? Ano yung una? First, always remember that the entity shall continue to account for the equity instrument granted based on the original condition and vesting period at the date of grant. So, lagi mong tatandaan, kahit na magkaroon ng changes or kahit na magkaroon ng modification, base pa rin tayo sa original condition as if hindi yan nangyari. Okay? Continue mo lang muna. Okay? Then, if the condition is beneficial, once again, if the condition, if the condition is beneficial, I'm talking about beneficial. Uh, I'm talking about the new condition here, ah. If the condition if is beneficial to employees, ibig sabihin ng beneficial here, nag-increase yung fair value of share options or nag-decrease yung option price. Okay? So, if the condition is beneficial to the employees, see to it no, that the entity shall include, again, the entity shall include the increased in fair value as what? As additional expense or additional compensation expense. So, sir, what if hindi po beneficial sa empleyado natin? If the modification is not beneficial to employees, lagi mong tatandaan na as if hindi nangyari yung modification na yan. Because once again, kinocontinue po natin eh. Again, kinocontinue natin yung original condition. Okay? So, para mas magets natin yan, let's move on to the last problem and that's illustrative problem number 8. So, here on January 1, 2017, an entity granted 200 share options to each of the 400 employees. The options are exercisable after a 3-year vesting period. The fair value of each share option is 15 pesos on grant date. So, on December 31, 2017, 50 employees have left the entity. And based on the weighted average probability, 80 employees are expected to leave by the end of the vesting period. So, for the year 2017, ilang empleyado na nga ulit meron tayo? We have a total of 400 employees. During 2017, lumayas yung 50. And then, inaasahan natin na for the years 2018 to 2019, a further 80 employees will left. So, ilan na lang ang matitira? Ang matitira na lang na inaasahan natin is actually equal to 270 employees. Each employees will receive 200, so times 200, ilang share options na to in total? 270 times 200, or this is equal to 54,000 pesos. Okay? Multiply natin yan, syempre, sa fair value. No? So, magkano fair value? Fair value is actually equal to 15 pesos daw. So, magkano yung total compensation expense? The total compensation expense will be equal to 810,000. Okay? I divide natin yan sa 3 years which is the vesting period para ma-compute natin yung compensation expense for the year 2017. So 810 divided by 3 compensation expense now for the year 2017 is equal to 270,000 pesos. Okay? Now punta tayo ng 2018. Anong nangyari ng 2018? On January 1, 2018, the entity reprised the share options by lowering the exercise price. So, kapag pinababa mo yung exercise price, beneficial po yan sa ating mga empleyado. Okay? The option is still vest after 3 years from grant date and the entity estimated that on the date of repricing, the increase, once again, the increase in the fair value of the share option is equal to 7 pesos. Okay? Once again, i-continue muna natin yung original and then kapag beneficial, i-account natin yung additional rate or yung increase in fair value as additional compensation expense. Pero kapag hindi beneficial, as if hindi nangyari yung modification na yan. Okay? So, ilang empleyado na nga ulit meron tayo? We have a total of 400 employees. 2017, umalis yung 50. 2018, ilan nang umalis? Sabi ng problem, during 2018, 35 employees left the entity and a further, further 40 employees are expected to leave by 2019. So, inaasahan natin na ang matitira na lang is 400 minus 50 minus 35 and minus 40 or that's equal to 275 employees. Multiply natin yan sa 200 share options kasi each employees will receive no 200 share options. 
So, 275 times 200, this is equal to 55,000 share options. Then, times the fair value of 15, makukompute natin yung total compensation expense, which is equal to magana. 55,000 times 15, or this is equal to 825,000 pesos. Okay? Ngayon, i-multiply natin yan saan? I-multiply po natin yan sa 2 over 3. Bakit? Kasi 2 years na yung lumipas and 3 years ang vesting period. So, ang ibig sabihin ngayon dito, ang makukompute muna natin is the cumulative compensation expense. So, 825 times 2 over 3, this is actually equal to 550,000 pesos. Okay? Then, i-deduct natin dyan yung compensation expense ng 2017 para makompute yung compensation expense ng 2018. So, minus 270,000 compensation expense for the year 2018 is 280,000. But wait, there's more. Hindi pa po yan yung total compensation expense natin. Once again, beneficial sa empleyado yung modification. So, we have to account for the increase. So, ilang share options na nga ulit meron tayo? We have a total of 55,000 share options, no? So, multiply natin yan dun sa increase in fair value, which is equal to 7, para makompute yung additional total compensation expense. So, 55,000 times 7, this is equal to 385,000 pesos. I-divide mo yan by 2 years. Sir, bakit 2 years? Kasi po, right, dalawang taon na lang yung natitira. Hindi po by 3 years, ha? Dalawang taon na lang ang natitira. Kasi 2018 tayo nagkaroon ng modification. Okay? So, the additional compensation expense now will be equal to magkano? The additional compensation expense will be equal to 385 divided by 2 or this is equal to 192,500. So, kapag in mo, Yung 280 at yung 192,500, see to it now that the compensation expense for the year 2018 is equal to magkano? That's 192,500 plus 280,000 or ang isasagot mo dapat is 472,500. So, our final answer will be equal to 472,500. Okay? Now, punta tayo ng 2019. So, for the year 2019, anong sabi? During 2019, 50 employees actually left the entity. So, ilang employees meron tayo? We have a total of 400 employees. 2017, umalis yung 50. 2018, umalis yung 35. And then, during 2019, ilan nang umalis? Umalis yung 50. So, ang ibig ngayong sabihin dito, ilan lang talagang natira after the vesting period? Ang natira lang after the 3-year vesting period is equal to 400 minus 50 minus 35 minus 50 or this is equal to 265 employees times 200 because each employee will receive 200 share options. So, the total share options nating ipamimigay will be equal to 53,000 share options. Okay? Multiply natin yan sa original condition which is fair value is 15 lang para makompute yung total compensation expense which is equal to 795,000. Okay? Deduct natin dyan, no yung compensation expense ng 2017 at yung compensation expense ng 2018 para makompute yung compensation expense sa 2019 based on the original condition. Again, original condition pa lang to, okay? So, 2017, that's 270,000. Then, 2018, that's 280,000. So, magkano yung compensation expense based on the original condition? That's 795 minus 270,000 minus 280,000 or this is equal to 245,000 pesos. Okay? Now, nagkaroon nga ng modification at beneficial yun. So, we have to account the increase in fair value as additional compensation expense. So, share options nga is equal to 55,000. And then, increase in fair value once again is equal to 7. Okay? So, magkano yung total compensation expense? 55,000? Joke lang. 53,000 lang. Again, 53,000 lang to. Okay, so 53,000 times 7, this is equal to 371,000. Dulo na po ito ng vesting period. That is why hindi muna ito i-multiply ng 2 over 2. Okay, i-deduct muna lang dyan yung compensation expense last 2017, which is equal to 192,500. Okay, para makompute yung additional compensation expense for the year 20, ah, 19, 2018 pala to, sorry. Okay. So, 371,000 minus 192,500, this is equal to 178,500. So, for the year 2019 now, 
the total compensation expense is actually equal to 178,500 plus 245,000 or this is equal to 423,500. Okay? So that's modification of condition. Okay? So, thank you for watching our video. Mamaya sa part 2 or bukas sa part 2, i-discuss naman natin yung cash settle share based compensation. So, ingat kayo palagi. God bless guys. And see you on our next video. Bye-bye.